Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're back with the Tomb Kings once again, Cetra the Imperishable, this time on the Chariot of the Gods. Quite the schnazzy chariot with its blue flaming wheels pulled by four horses, and Cetra looking regal as ever. Uh, you don't get to see the Chariot of the Gods too often, mainly because it's objectively worse than the, uh, the uh, War Sphinx, but still decided to bring it in this matchup just for a bit of fun. Uh, it does do flaming magic damage uh, or piercing anti-infantry with a 100 charge bonus, which is probably its best feature. Uh, that 100 charge bonus is definitely pretty legit. For the rest of the army, we've got a front line of skeleton spearmen, second line of skeleton warriors, lots of Nehekara horsemen, four with two on each flanks. We've also got two of the Necropolis knights with halberds to back them up. Some carrion, uh, three carrion in total, and a unit of skeleton horsemen archers. And that's pretty much it for my build. A nice wide uh, Tomb King's army. Yeah, and the idea here is we're going to swarm the Empire as much as possible to try and take out their ranged units for my opponent. Uh, let's have a look here. Looks like he's got a general of the Empire up in the air with uh, some items. Looks like the uh, Rune Fang. And I believe, let's see, this is the Charm Shield. Yep, <clears throat> very good stuff. Uh, we've got Royal Altar of Griffites along with a Jade Wizard, looks like the Silver Bullets, and a Light Wizard. So Light Wizard has Net of Amatok and uh, Foss Protection, whereas the Jade Wizard has Regrowth and Earthblood. Both of them, I believe, have Power Stones, yep. And we've also got the Templehof Luminarch, uh, Great Swords, with a front line of Halberdiers, and that's pretty much it. So without further ado, you can see the battle's already getting underway with the Carrion coming in and trying to tie down the uh, Templehof Luminarch here. Obviously, Cetra being flammable, if we go ahead and have a look here on his tooltip, does take 25% extra damage from uh, flaming attacks. And it's worth noting the Templehof Luminarch, just as a reminder, all Luminarchs, in fact, do flaming magic, uh, massive armor-piercing missile damage, so they will get a bonus to damage against Tomb King's characters, pretty much everybody besides Kotep. But uh, still, you can see I'm uh, bogging things down nicely here. So far, so good. Haven't got shot at at all. Meanwhile, the General of the Empire is up here. We actually put that bonus versus large uh, with the sweet incantation of Cursed Blades upgraded. Just to see if we could do a little bit of damage to General of the Empire. Doesn't, he only has 85 armor and uh, 50 melee defense, which is decent. Not amazing. Um, but he is taking a little bit of damage there. Nothing crazy, but still, considering it's a 350-point carrion, that's great. But the Royal Altar of Griffites, on the other hand, we were able to pull out of position and get into an engagement with the uh, Necropolis Knights here. Now, they will normally just beat the brakes off Necropolis Knights. You can see this unit is suffering pretty badly here, but Cetra's going to pop that... that uh, uh, what is his blade called? I'm not, I can't, can't remember. The Blessed Blade, that's it. So that does apply the blind effect to these Royal Altar Fights. You can see their combat stats are severely reduced. We're also going to pull back these Necropolis Knights just to see if we can't heal them up a bit uh, with the uh, Lore of Nehekara. Anyway, the Royal Altar Fights have pulled back here. The spear support and everything, too much for them. Meanwhile, in the main line, you can see the uh, Nekar horsemen cycle charging some great swords a little bit, actually doing some pretty solid damage. State troops getting wrapped up in skeletons all across the board, and uh, some Nekar horsemen trying to get in the back line to uh, get on this Templehof Luminarch. It's definitely a very high value target, especially with Cetra getting all danger close like this. My opponent's going to go ahead and drop a net on Cetra and probably go ahead and take a shot at him here. Uh, thankfully for me, there are quite a bit of unit models in the way, but let's see if this makes good contact here. Cetra, oh, that was actually just exactly the wrong time to use that ability because it knocked everyone out of the way, and then he took the full brunt of that shot. Still, though, thankfully the Chariot of the Gods does have quite a bit of HP, so Cetra took quite a bit of damage there, but still online, and more carrion swooping down to tie down the Templehof Luminarch. Meanwhile, you can see the infantry line slowly starting to crumble for the Empire. These great swords actually taking surprising damage from the Nekkar horsemen. I was very happy with their performance here. Uh, let's have a look at their weapon strength just out of curiosity. Uh, let's see, 10 AP per swing, which is not bad at all for a unit of that price. Uh, looks like another shot from the Templehof Luminarch. Not sure if that made contact with Cetra. I do believe that was a bit of a swing and a miss there. But uh, the General of the Empire comes down to try and goon Cetra as well. Um... You know, this this could potentially work, uh, however, of course, Cetra does do armor-piercing damage, and if you were to counter-charge, he can actually do a surprising amount of damage to large targets with that 100 charge bonus. It's pretty significant, but another 360 no-scope from the Templehof. Swing and a miss there. Actually looks like it took out a couple of those Necropolis Knights, but this unit of Necropolis Knights came in pretty much unopposed on this flank. Uh, the Royal Altar of Griffites, unfortunately, were dragged down and uh, just didn't get the healing in time to be saved. <clears throat> and the Necropolis Knights actually fared 
quite well in that engagement. Now these Necropolis Knights are going to get in here, start to shut down uh, some Empire Knights here. And uh, I think maybe Empire Knights, I'm not sure. I might have missed them earlier. I see some barded horses down there. But uh, anyway, the General of the Empire gets swarmed here by all these Nekaro horsemen. And uh, you know what? Actually, that was probably the Temple of Hoff Luminarch, those uh, barded horses. Anyway, <laughs> the uh, General of the Empire here fighting against the Necropolis Knights who get Fa's protection to give them that sweet physical resistance and lots of healing going off Realm of Souls doesn't appear to act, appear to actually affect the Necropolis Knights which is a bit unfortunate but the incantation protection will still uh, you know give them a bit of physical resistance there so they'll be able to hang around you can see the pocket is quickly collapsing for the remainder of the Empire forces Cetra gonna charge in here on his chariot of the gods a little bit jankily you know there's lots of uh, friendly large mass units in the way here but he is eventually going to get in here and land a nice rear charge and uh, get some attacks on the back of the general of the empire here you can see the uh, shop he had just chased off the one caster i, I think uh, maybe he went somewhere else but yeah this light caster coming in still holding up the leadership of the empire at the moment but this huge just tomb kings just wave you know all these skeletons just dragging things down and the elite units able to clean up you know the high value targets and carry in definitely mvps here and they being able to tie down the temple hoff luminarch you know tie down the general of the empire in the air and do some damage to him just in general carry in a super super cost effective unit at 350 points they could honestly probably stand to go up to about 400 points and they would be just fine but uh, in terms of the rest of the army here, the front line worked out pretty well. Just in general, my idea was to swarm the Empire with overwhelming numbers, and we were able to do that pretty effectively. Nehkar Horseman, kind of an unsung hero here as well. One of them able to get 51 kills on an XP Chevron, which is not bad at all. Uh, the Skeleton Horseman Archer is also doing some nice skirmishing. No, nothing crazy, but uh, Necropolis Knights definitely did some heavy lifting as well. You can see 40 kills, 3 XP Chevrons, and a 55 and 2 here. Took out a lot of those great swords, the uh, all the Griffites, the Temple of Luminarch. So I really like these guys as a, kind of a counter to Demis. Obviously, my opponent didn't have the faith buffs to uh, buff up the Demis, which I would have definitely recommended. Uh, we'll take a look at a cost comparison with the General of the Empire in just a moment here. But uh, in terms of the rest of my army, not really too much else to say. Cetra, 53 kills himself, riding around on the chariot. You know, nothing too crazy, but uh, I'm just happy that he survived more or less. Uh, for my opponent, though... Uh, the Temple of Luminarch, definitely a fun pick in this matchup, and it can take a lot of Tomb Kings players by surprise just because of how much damage it does do to Lords. Um, but it is pretty risky, especially when you go with a, a smaller, more elite army like this. You know, Halberdiers will generally struggle to be cost-effective against different kinds of Tomb Kings infantry, you know, like Skeletons, Nehekara, Warriors probably trade reasonably well against Halberdiers just because they're a little bit more expensive. Um, Great Swords are a couple of them is definitely not a bad pick, but Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of Halberdiers. Um, you know, the armor piercing, in theory, is nice, and they also have expert charge defense, but it's not like the Tomb Kings really have any high charge infantry. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. So if we switch over to the Empire against the Tomb Kings. Uh, yeah, so... The Templehof Luminarch, definitely a risky pick, but it's a fun pick nonetheless. I just want to do a quick cost comparison here. Uh, General of the Empire on the Pegasus, I think he had all of his kit. Is what, 1700? I honestly think that bringing an Arch Lector is going to be a lot more cost effective. Even if you bring him with his, uh, you know, basically full kit of abilities, it's still going to be better, I think, just because these support abilities are so, so strong. But in general, I typically will run... Um, this, or depending on the matchup, I might also grab the Grand Soul Fire and the Grand Shield of Faith. In this one, I'll probably grab the Grand Shield of Faith. Grand Soul Fire, you know, you might f face like a Fate of Buna or a Spirit Leech, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, instead of bringing both the Light Wizard and the uh, Jade Wizard, I'm just going to bring a Jade Wizard here. Uh, the Teplehof Luminarch has the net already, and that's going to be enough micro for me to worry about, so I'm not going to worry about another Wizard. Uh, that will also enable us to get uh, something else here we could potentially get a witch hunter or a warrior priest now this is another uh, method of getting fire damage against the tomb kings you can grab this banner of eternal flame that will give uh, fire damage to an area of effect around the warrior priest it affects both melee and missile damage um, so yeah and then you could run him something like this with the hammer of sigmar banner of eternal flame and a regular war horse and then you can run him with some demigriff knights another unit of demigriff knights to go with the arch lector and at this point, we're going to go ahead and cheap out in the front line a little bit. Spearmen with shields will do just fine against most skeletons. I mean, they won't necessarily win, but they'll be able to hold the line for long enough that they can uh, they can get some 
your other units, I should say, can get some work done. Um, we've still got quite a few points left, so potentially we can look at getting some handgunners. Outriders are also potentially very good here. Uh, the mobile armor-piercing missiles, potentially very decent. The silver bullets, especially with their stock, aren't going to get uh, counterfired by something like a Shabti Grapos. And uh, yeah, mm, let's see what else. Maybe a couple of Reichsguard. We can only really afford one Reichsguard, or maybe a couple of Empire Knights just to fill out some more bodies and some more shock cavalry. But uh, yeah, this is pretty basic. Again, the, the Tempelhof Luminarch, fun pick. It can be very powerful, but it is pretty risky as well. So you just kind of need to be aware of that and where you're investing your resources and everything. So um, yeah, hope, hopefully you guys found this video enjoyable and informative. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.